Hello guys, it's GED question of the daytime and it looks like I've got another little equation here to solve. Um, I do want to preface this video with um, if you are a GED student, I'm only going to talk about one aspect of this problem. As you go into higher math, you're going to learn um, that this particular problem is something that has more than one answer. There's more than one correct answer, which is not something we're used to in the world of GED. Um, in lower math, we're used to problems that just have one single solitary answer. There's one right answer. And this particular problem has two, but I'm only going to discuss one of them, the one that comes up on the GED and the one that's most intuitive. So um, for those of you who have touched on the higher math, um, um, know that I do understand there's two answers. You don't have to leave me nasty um, Facebook messages. Uh, but for my GED students, there's only one um, application we need of this, okay? So let's take a look here. It says solve the equation for m. Solve the equation for m. And I see this equation, m, and I see this little floating 2. You read that sucker as squared. Oh, once again, I need my pen. So um, one way to say this is m to the second power, but mathematicians are notoriously lazy. m to the second power takes a really long time to say. So our kind of like nickname for this little floating two is the square. And so I read this as m squared. So m squared is equal to 121. Please don't say m2, but that's a different thing, okay? That's m squared or m to the second power. So m squared is equal to 121. Okay, so I know I've been told to solve the equation. And again, to solve an equation means to isolate the variable, get the letter alone. And I can see that this m is almost alone, but not quite. The only thing on the same side of the equal sign with m is this little floating 2, this square. And so that's what I have to get rid of. Now. We get rid of things mathematically. We only have the power to do this when we have an equation, when we have this two-sided thing with an equal in between. You know, the day we got that equal sign, we got the power to do whatever we want, and we can use it to get rid of math that we can't do. And that's what we're going to do here. We don't know how to square m, so instead we're going to get rid of the square. Okay. Now, to get rid of it, you have to do the opposite. So that's what throws students. They say, well, what's the opposite of squaring? Well, let's talk about that. Well, we know um, some inverse operations. We know the opposite of, like, adding is subtracting. So if I wanted to get rid of addition, I could subtract. We know the opposite of multiplication is division. So if I wanted to get rid of multiplication, I could divide or vice versa. If I wanted to get rid of division, I could multiply. But do you know what the opposite of square is? So that's what a lot of students don't know. The opposite of square, that little floating two, mind you, not a two with its feet on the floor, is square root, square root. So if I want to get rid of a square, what I'm going to do is I'm going to square root uh, the entire left-hand side of the equation. Okay, so there we go. The opposite of square is square root. Now that rule of solving equations, that rule of equations is great. I mean, it's a lot of power. It says you can do whatever you want, but don't forget the if if you do it to both sides of the equation. So if you go ahead and decide, I'm going to square root the left-hand side, you better go ahead and decide to square root that right-hand side as well so that your equation stays balanced. Great. Let's take a look at what happens. On this side, my square and my square root cancel, leaving me with just m. And on this side, uh, what number times itself? That's what I ask when I square root. What number times itself is equal to 121? Well, I know like 9 times 9 is 81, too low. 10 times 10 is 100, still too low. But 11 times 11 is 121. And so the square root, what 121 is made of, its root is 11. It comes from the number 11 multiplying by itself. Notice I don't put a little 2 there. There's no little 2 there, OK? Um, I did the square rooting and what I got down to was 11. So m is equal to 11. That is the answer there. That is the answer that we're going to see on the GED. Um, I will just nod to the students who are in higher math who do realize that another way, so it's true that 11 times 11 is equal to 121. But it is also true that negative 11 times negative 11 is equal to 121 because of that wonderful rule about two negatives multiplying to make a positive. And so it is true, like I said, that there could be two answers here. Um, negative 11 is also a perfectly legit answer. But because this skill comes up most often in geometry on the GED, usually when I'm looking for the side of a um, right triangle, um, 
Yeah, you would never have the side of a triangle that's a negative number. And so a lot of times at the GED level math, we just ignore the negative answer and just stick with that positive answer. So yes, M is 11, equals 11 is the only answer you're probably going to need for your GED. Um, great. If you have any questions about this, please do uh, drop them in the comments. I'd love to answer them, you know. That's what I do all day long, answer math questions. It's my favorite. <laughs> and uh, until next time, guys.